I'm a developer advocate here as well, and we'll get into Svelte today. We have been talking Svelte a lot, but for the yes. folks who don't know what Svelte is, do you want to give a quick introduction about it? Sure. Um, it's a UI framework, just like React, Angular, Astro, Vue, uh, what's the other one, Alpine, whatever. Like There seems to be a new one every week now. But yeah, I feel like to me, it's one of the big threes. So you know, you have when you're thinking about a front-end app, I think, okay, React, Vue, and now Svelte is definitely coming. These are the big three of like front-end development for me. And there is also a new thing called Svelte Kit, which will be the equivalent of Next.js. So you'll be able to make like, you know, your regular, your regular front end stuff, and then your like SSR and SSG and all that uh, mm -hmm. with Svelte Kit. So it's the same way, as I said, you have Next.js for React, you have Nuxt for Vue, I believe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, that, yeah that's the one. And for Svelte, you'll have Svelte Kit. Interesting, interesting. And I am also curious, you know, because we already have so many different kind of UI frameworks. Why, why Svelte? How is it different from other frameworks? I think you'll see it's in my view, it's simpler. Like it's really relies on like very much like the basics. It's like, it has a one file component, like everyone, like all the other ones, but most of like plain JavaScript stuff just works in it. That's the great thing is like, if you're, if you want to, um, I don't know, just, um, like if you want to make a map with Mapbox, cause it's, it's something I did recently. In React, you have to do all sorts of like gymnastics to make it work. Or what people do is they find a package, which is React dash whatever. Mm -hmm. And was failed because it's it's less, um, yeah, it's it's lower level. It's closer to like just, you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's a, a, very, a very simple combo of that. Things, it's a lot easier to make things work with it. So in my opinion, that's why I usually go for it. Another thing is it doesn't have a runtime. So with React, you know, you're mm -hmm. you make your React app and you ship React with it because when you're, you know, you're there's a there's a runtime that does all the things live on your computer. So sorry, on your client. But for Svelte, the, a lot of the framework goes away during comp during compilation. So it relies on the compiler a lot more in the sense that the code that you write doesn't have to be reinterpreted at runtime by something else. It's like it's compiled to something that just runs. So as a result, it's often like smaller in terms of like JavaScript footprint. footprint. Yeah, I, I feel like it's going to be my go-to framework now. Like I, I've I've used it here and there. Um, and I have a friend who's like, a, you know, a convert. He's like, I'm doing Svelte everything now. And I feel like I'm I'm like him now, especially with, with Svelte Kit, because, you know, you can do all the all your API stuff a lot more mm -hmm. easily, all your server side things Saying that we're yeah. going to create a Svelte project from scratch. And um, yeah, so we'll see. So right. the first thing you want to do is go to svelte.dev, I believe. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. svelte.dev. We'll kind of open the documentation. Uh, ju yeah, just svelte.dev. I think you're, you'll have your getting started there. Um, OK, I'm just going to go to the home page. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll if you scroll down a bit, mm -hmm. Then you'll see the, a very intuitive npm create v da, 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 with like for some reason double double dashes. So so yeah. So if you go okay. yeah. So just cop copy and paste that. Cool. And then maybe change my app to whatever you want. Uh, I'm just gonna call this weld intro. Works for me. Wait, what? I know, this was, right? This was know, so right? quick. I mean, wow. <laughs> it's supposed to be Svelte. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. There you go. It did not just... install any dependencies, right? I still need yeah, to so run give it, give it an npm i just to be sure. Yeah. I have honestly never seen any UI framework or any you know, project created so quickly. How fast was that? Even that, right? This is what I love about it. It's so small, like, you know, 28 packages, like Gatsby, like my my website on Gatsby has like a thousand packages. <laughs> yeah. But, but with Gatsby, it, because you have to use different plugins, right? For everything that you want to add, which kind of yeah, adds of, like, those remark. packages. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but still, like you're you're like in here, you have everything you need. Twenty eight packages. That's it. Cool. Uh, yeah. And would like to kind of understand the project structure here. Cool. So uh, VS Code is being a good guy. So I think you want to install the extension because just like you know uh, most like UI frameworks these days, there's like a single file component type thing, um, and this mm -hmm. is you know it gives you syntax highlighting. Okay, so I have the extension installed. Sweet. So if you open up the source, and then, okay, perfect. So app.svelte is probably what you want. Okay, so that's your that's your component. This is how your all your components will look like. So, so you get a script tag at the bottom. That's where your JavaScript is, mm -hmm. um, your main. And then if you scroll down, you'll have your CSS. This feels a lot like Vue. Right, yeah. It's it's in between. I feel like to me it's like it's in between like Vue and like and something that's like very reliant on plain JavaScript, like you know, like 11T, for example. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, so you see it's it's a bit of both. It's like you don't have that view component syntax, it's like you know, view dot template or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So in that script above, you can write whatever you want, and that's what we'll do. So let's let's get that running. So if you go to your package JSON, mm -hmm. uh, it's probably going to be a, a yeah dev. Yeah. So if you just do an npm run dev, you should have that. I'm, I'm curious, what does preview do? Does it, is it something that you run after you build your project? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I like this your, example. Yeah. I know it's like basic enough. All right, okay, so we got the project up and running. We use the command npm create wide and then pass on the template flag and we have something up and running, uh, but we don't want that. We want to create our own app. So how do we go ahead with that? Cool, so I think, well, you'd go to app.svelte and like clear it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I would get rid of, I guess, everything between like line seven and 14 just to Mm -hmm. Get a bit of clarity because we don't need those logos. Okay, so so it's very much like you know, like a templating thing. You have your your HTML on one side, your JavaScript that's above, and then under you have your your CSS. So, so, so the the styles you see here are are all like locally scoped. So you have the actually this is a perfect view. So in your line seventeen, you have like class read the docs, mm -hmm. and that's and the style is just underneath. So everything there is scoped. So this is not Got like it. a global a global style. We'll look at global styles a bit later if we have time. Um, but yeah, that's roughly it. It's like and um, so that's it. Everything is scoped to the to the components. That's fairly standard now with. React and like CSS modules or um, style JSX with Next.js. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's the way it works. So if you save that and refresh, hopefully we did not break anything. <laughs> uh, I hope not. Cool. Okay. Right, live reload. Cool. Okay. Live reload is perfect. And you still have your counter there. And the counter, if we go back to the code, it's a component in itself. Yes. All right, and we are importing it from the mm -hmm. lib directory. That's interesting. Yeah. So let's let's have a look because I'm curious how that yeah. looks like. So if I go to counter, wow, okay. I was expecting a bit of more code over here. Right, I know it's it's <laughs> concise, isn't it? Everything is like very lean. So yeah, that's it. So the we we can we can build build our understanding of that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so the. We're looking at JavaScript now, so it borrows a little bit from like uh, templating, you know, uh, templating stuff. Like you know, so you have this double bracket sign, where you know you have your your variable count, right? That is just uh, again, that's like a, it would basically be like a prop, right? You have your like an internal prop, I guess, or no, sorry, like an internal like an internal state. So your your you know your count variable is represented in there. If you increment it on click, which is what's happening on line eight, which then calls the function on line three, you increment it, that changes the variable, which changes mm -hmm. in the component. And then, you know, in React, you do that with, with a, a set state, right? Right. Like you right. have a set state with a number, and you increment it, and that's it. 
that's the that's the thing. I I like how concise this is, and it is simple enough to understand what is happening in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, yeah. So if you go to that lib folder and mm -hmm. you create a component, you call it I don't know card. We could make like a like a product card um, that has like you know, different things. So there you go. And now you're empty. So the the good thing is, yeah, your script tag. There you go. Um, and then I can have simple. HTML going in yeah, over it. here, that's... Mm. and then for style, I can have style. Yep. Style text. And the great thing is your emit like autocomplete just works, right? Like, <laughs> so yeah. So for that div, if you give it, um, I don't know, give it like a border or something. So you could give it a class. You could either in that style, you could either give it a class of like cards, for example, or you could target it directly in the style and have just like div. But I think it's probably neater to give it a yeah. So so again, it's it's like that. So if you go down and you create a CSS rule for dot card, yeah, that's the one. Uh, and you give it, I don't know, like a border uh, of like, I don't know, one pixel solid white or something. Solid black. Don't but think it's good. Yeah. 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 Let's just leave it like that for now. Um make it like make it like orange or something so that we can see it on the black background. Ah, right. I forgot we had a black background, right? Uh, yeah. Tomato is a good one if you're looking for like a, a good color. <laughs> okay. I like it. Sweet. So now you have your component. So if you save that and go back to your... But I think we'll, we'll need to define the width as well, right? Otherwise, it's, it's not going to display anything. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, width, I don't know, 500 pixels. Yeah, we'll see. We can change it later. And in app, this is where we want to. Yep. And you see, we also have a class of card here, which is interesting. Um, you know, to demonstrate that thing. Of like, yep. Right. That's kind of interesting. And I'm gonna import it somewhere down here. This is nice. Okay. So I created a component. And I simply imported it from the lib folder. This is interesting. You said you want to make some sort of a shopping cart, right? So what are information yeah. do we need to add in that card? Yeah. So I think first let's like let's style it so you can give it maybe an H2 or something, like just give it like you know, the title, the paragraph. Uh I'm just gonna call it title for now. Yeah. Description. And anything else? Uh, Price yeah, maybe. First. Sweet. Okay, so again, like similarly, we can we can style it the way we want. We can target the H two directly in the mm -hmm. style underneath. Uh, what do we want to do? Font size. Yeah. Let's make it. Um, Let's make it 30 for now, just, just to check if things work. I want to try using something else a bit later. What else do we want to do? Do you want to start anything else or do you want to just check this right now? I think it, let's just try that, see what happens. Okay. Okay. I think, I think it worked. <laughs> yep. Let's see what's happening in app.css. There seems to be a... I don't know where this gets. I don't know where this gets Body. imported actually. Over here, I think. Yeah, I don't know where this gets imported from. <laughs> so there, there's a there's a better way of doing this, which I think we'll look at in a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to look at now is you know you, we we saw local style mm -hmm. right with with the card thing. Now, let's do global styles, but let's do it a bit more explicitly. So. Okay. So if you go back to your app, that's failed. Yeah. So in your style, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So um, if you go to, so I want to use this thing called open props, which is just basically just a bunch of um, CSS variables. So if you open your browser and go to open props, we'll see we'll import these as, as global, and then we'll be able to use them in. Um, 
And it's openprops.style. Yes, I think that's your first link. Okay. Cool. And that, and you have your at import at the top. So if, um, you should be able to put that right in the in your style. Okay. There you go. Now it doesn't now it doesn't do anything, which is normal. So if we go, um, and now what you want to do is uh, after style. So you want mm -hmm. to add an attribute just called global with no value. So on line 12. Yes, that's it, just global. Uh, okay, so we are now telling 12 that all the styles that we are writing in here is gonna, it should be implemented everywhere in the application. Yes, yeah, exactly. So basically what was happening with app.css uh, which, you know, we had this style that was loaded somehow, but, you mm -hmm. know, we're, I, I wasn't sure where. So I think the, so at least we know like, okay, this is our app. This is our entry point. What's happening. We have some, we have some global styles um, there. Okay. So you do that. Now, um, if you go back to, so if you, you've imported open props. Now what you want to do is to look at, um, at another line, that is it's basically copy and paste that line. Okay. And then and then you go open props and then at the end you go slash normalize dot min dot CSS. So that will give you like a nice normalized style. Slash, oh, sorry, slash normalize. Slash dot min, min dot CSS. Yeah, min dot CSS, yeah. Dot min, sorry, like minified. Cool. And now let's reload and see what happens. We still haven't done. Cool. Okay. Wait. Now we're back. I am a bit curious because we didn't add any styles. How did did we just use the styles that were by default available with open props? So that's the thing. So the the first import is just a bunch of variables. So, mm -hmm. so if if you if you comment out line fourteen, you won't see, you won't see any changes, because it's just the variables, right? Ah, uh, okay, okay. And now, if you if you go, if you're importing the normalized thing, then you have this global style that's being applied everywhere, and everything just looks a little bit nicer. So when now, you... what's interesting is if you go back to your, if we go back to our card component, mm -hmm. for the H two, we can give it a value that's again, part of these global styles, which you know in your app you'd have as part of some kind of design system or just even your own like theme, right? If you have like a, I don't know, Dracula theme or whatever. <laughs> um, so in here you could give it, um, yeah. So for example, you could give it uh, for, we we're talking about font size. So you could give it, um, no, let's change it. Let's add a font weight. You know what, let's add a font weight to that. Cool, and then you give it, you open up for a CSS variable, so you know var, bracket, bracket. I might have to check, okay, yeah. Bracket, bracket, and give it font dash weight dash seven. Okay. Sorry, dash dash, because it's a CSS var. Yeah. There you go, cool. And reload and see what happens. Nice. Okay, now you can see it. So, so that's what I was saying. So now we have this global thing that's being imported, and we can do these things that you know, mm -hmm. in our own, and it's nice and explicit. Okay, so we can customize that a little bit, a little bit. Um, font weight eight. So for your um, for your paragraphs. Uh, Again, you could give it a different font weight, maybe a little bit bigger. So for your, your paragraph in there, yeah, let's say just uh, and do the same thing, var dash dash font dash weight and give it four, I don't know, something. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, uh, cool. Yeah, so it's starting to look a little bit better. Perfect. So now we have this global styles being applied. Um, 
Now let's see how we can make these components a little bit more dynamic, right? So we have right. titles and description. Um, so if you go back to app.felt, um, and in card, so if you give it properties the same way you gave it in React. So if you go title equals title or whatever, at least a good typos, yeah. So give it title, perfect. And you save, if you go back to your card, mm -hmm. Now again, similarly to all the all the React stuff. So I think I just have to do this. No. So yes and no. So there's that, but you need to let Svelte know that this is a var. Uh -huh. It's coming from elsewhere. So in your script, okay, you want to go export let title, and that should be it. If I am not mistaken. <laughs> There you go. Okay. And it, it, you know, even like VS Code is able to tell you as well that cool. All right. So, so if we want to use props, we might, we would have to export them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because otherwise it's, it's internal. So it would be scoped. So we had like, we had it in the counter. So you go back to counter, mm -hmm. um, you see that count value is just local to that yeah. file. Ah, okay. So, so if you give it a count property, like it won't work. If you wanted to initialize it at five, for example, you could have done that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, so like let the let another component initialize it at five. This is why you would export it. But right now, that count is just, you know, it's at zero and you and it's like the CSS we were looking at before, it's just scoped to that component. Got it. Okay. Makes sense now. Okay. Understood. Hmm. Cool. So now we can do this with um Description. Like the other things like with the description and like the price. And I can I simply do this. You should be able to, yes. And you can see it was complaining that it was unused, right? You had this like yellow mm. squiggly thing. You still see it for price. And that's good. Like I think one other benefit of Svelte, which is not about the, the framework directly, is I think like the, the VS Code extension is really good. You can see price. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, yes. All right, so I created my first dynamic component in Svelte. Yes. Ah, yeah. Nice, I like it. Yeah. So now All what right. we can do is, sorry, go on. Yeah, I was just saying we saw how we can create dynamic components. Now, what would be the next thing that we should look into? I think we could make these. Um, we could make the. We can go a level higher. Okay. So like right now, these props are like hard coded, you know, mm -hmm. in your app dot svelte. But ideally, they would come from you know a CMS like Contentful or you know or or something else. So we'd have that coming on the JS side or on on SSR. So right. if you go back to your app.svelte, what you can do is define these basically in, in JavaScript and like have them trickle down. Right. Uh, maybe exactly. Have an yeah. Array. yeah, you could have an array as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good shout. Uh, what are properties do we need? Title, description. Description and then the price. For the price, what I want to do is I want to make a quick change over here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to uh, add the symbol every time. So what I'm thinking is I add a symbol over here. Nice. Yeah, you see where this and that's it. That's so simple with when you're with with Velt, you're just like that's it. Mm. All right. Just gonna quickly yeah, fill that out. Use all this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, 30. Yeah, and you can make that a number. You'll see like, you're, yeah, perfect. So it's not a string, yeah. Okay, so we have now a list of products, assuming mm -hmm. it's coming from external API. Mm -hmm. So how do we use them in here? Yeah, so now this is <laughs> the the one, I think, little, little drawback in Svelte is the, the 
like dynamic syntax I find confusing. So I, I, I'm going to have you look it up because otherwise I'm going to get it wrong. So if you go back to your browser and Google like Svelte for loop or something. Um, Maybe they have something yeah. in the docs. I hope they do. Oh yeah, can there I you go. Um, yeah, so you can see it. It's uh, you have template syntax on your left yeah. sidebar, and then you have each. Cool. So that now you have it. Perfect. So you see in your UL tag there, you have an example. Each item as item. So that's a for loop, right? In okay. in React, like you'd create a for loop and like map. Yeah, exactly. Or we so, we use the map map method. Yeah, exactly. So in here, you would do this each block. So it starts again with a hash, and you close it with a with a forward slash. So um, okay. So I'm curious. Is is this the general way of writing in Svelte? As far as I know, <laughs> yes. So let's do. So should, no, I so don't want to paste that. that in. Yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it in a dev. And then, because we call it data, this should yep. be data. And yep. we want it, this to be the card. Exactly, yep. And mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be title. Yep, perfect. Yeah, you got it. Item.title, all right. Uh, description is going to be Obvious code. <laughs> Does not show me the thing I want. I know, right? It's always I I always get this. Like sometimes it's like, what is that RTC session thing? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, what are you what like <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And oops, I'm gonna remove this. This should create now three product cards mm -hmm. for us. Yes. If we get it right, <laughs> there you go. Nice. nice, nice. Okay, I like this. Right, it's it's neat. It's uh, there isn't a lot. You're not writing a lot of code, which is great. Exactly. Yeah, because again, in React, I would have to have a map function, which I often I don't know. I feel like I mess it up every time I use that for some reason. <laughs> because there's a key thing, right? And you can't like yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. This looks neat. So we now have, so now we are having, uh, we are now getting, assuming we are getting data from an external API, we are now rendering this uh, easily by passing them as a loop and then passing them yeah. in the props. Okay. That's fantastic. And I see we got a question in the chat. What cool. about non-required prop? Oh, I see it now. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. There, there is, there is a syntax here. You can make um, props optional. But so what you're, I think what what you're referring to is there was um, like um, you know the the editor was going to give you like a warning. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. so, so 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 that's just a warning. Um, first of all, and and I think yeah, I think there is a syntax. I can't remember it right now. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, you you can definitely do that. Um, okay, uh, so I kind of now have a question over here. Yes. Uh, I am like just you know exporting all the props over here. So mm -hmm. is this by default becomes the required props, or how yeah. it works? Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I'm not, I can't, I can't remember because I think, so required in the sense that I don't think it's like if you get rid of, so if you go back to app.svelte mm -hmm. and if you get rid of price, yeah. I don't think it's going to crash. I think it, the editor might complain, but I don't think no, it's going to crash. So try it. is missing, but required. It says, but required. Yeah. So if you save, I don't think, I don't think it will crash. And yeah, it would just show up as undefined, which you can add a safeguard to. So what? So um, it's it's saying that because it, it's required because in your okay, remember now, because in your um, card in your component? card component you're displaying mm -hmm. it. So I think you can give it a default value. So if you give it price equals zero, there you go. Try that. 
Oh yeah, okay. Now yeah. the error is not shown over here. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so, so, okay. so this is why I think it's more like, it's not the sense of like, is it required? It's more like what's gonna happen if it's not there? And in, in our case, it was complaining because if it's not there, then mm -hmm. you get an undefined and you know, everything is wrong. Um, so yeah, so you gave it a default value and you were like, okay, now we're good. Interesting, okay. That's, so we got the component which renders the data coming in from uh, API right now. Now, what do we want to do next? Um, do we have time to do? We I, got, I, feel like... I would yeah. say roughly 15 minutes. I think we can do it. Okay. So, <laughs> so another thing that you'll do in, in the React sometimes is um, have a global state, right? We had global CSS. And now what about global state, right? So, mm -hmm. so right now what you'll do is, um, for example, if you go back to your card, that's felt. You could say that if, so if you create a local value and you call it like, uh, like is VAT, so has, no, no, has VAT, sorry. Like has VAT with like, um, like you know, if you set it to true um, or false, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's see, so, so let's say we have, want to have a global toggle that says, uh -huh. does the price have VAT in it? So ideally you'd have a UI and everything, but so far it's just trying to get it work in the stream. So right now in your, in line nine, mm -hmm. you could say, you could put a, a ternary condition. So you could say, you know, uh, has VAT question mark, so in there, Welcome you can say has system. VAT, question mark, like, um, and then you could do price times uh, 1.2, I think is the VAT, right? Or I mean, again, it, it, with... it's our app, we can define the VAT. Yeah, I know it's our app, right? So <laughs> <laughs> more price, okay. Okay. Cool, yeah. So if you go back, let's see, let's see if it worked. <laughs> Cool. Yep. Okay. So now we have a like a VAT applied. So if you wanted to toggle all the all the prices in in one go, so mm -hmm. um, right now our app is sufficiently small so that we can we could we could export that value and just um, and like do it directly in app.fill. But imagine you're like several levels of nesting down. You don't want to have a prop that like you know propagates all the way. Mm -hmm. So in React, you'll do that with context, right? Right. Yeah, and this is what I want to look at here too. Um, it's called stores. Mm -hmm. So let's go and create a new file in the lib folder. Mm -hmm. Call it, uh, I think, call it store.js. Cool. And now um, I'm gonna send you uh, your, no, I, th I think we can figure it out. So if you go back and you Google um, Svelte writable stores, then you'll find what you're looking for. Cool, so, so, so that, yeah, that's the one, cool. So yeah, we want to emulate that and have um, mm -hmm. a value that we can toggle from another place and have it and have another file sort of read read that value. I think I am understanding what is happening over here. So we are basically uh, telling Swell that, hey, this over here count should be writable by any component that is using it. Exactly, and that, and that will then propagate. So we won't use count, we will use just a has VAT thing because we want to, uh, um, as VAT and by it. we're gonna set it to false but true yeah okay mm -hmm. cool so if you go back to your to your app then you want to import your store how, how do I import the store is it import store oh it's, yeah just, just like in any just a normal import, just the same way you imported the, the component. Uh, okay, so wait, it's importing the variable, right? Yes, sorry, so yeah, so import the, the entire thing. So has VAT. Yeah, 
Exactly, perfect. Okay. Cool. So then if you go back to your, um, actually, no, you, 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 you don't even need to go. No, you don't even need to do it. So, and the, oh yeah, sorry. So yeah, do it directly in the card. Cool. So now your has VAT as opposed to it being local. Mm -hmm. We'll see if we can read from from the store directly, right? Okay. So we don't remove um, this. Yes. Well, so, sorry. You, you you can leave it. Just don't give it a value at all. So just give it let has VAT. Perfect. And if you go back to the to the the example that we saw. Mm -hmm. And now you see how you have that count value and then a subscribe. Yep. yep. Yeah. So if you do the same thing, but for, for our has VAT. Okay. So as this, and then we had, but do we need, we over here, we need to import VAT has VAT, right? From the global store first. Um, yes. So yeah, yes. Sorry. So you're right. So let's make, let's rename that. Uh, um, maybe like has VAT current or something. Uh, so... Yeah, you can see also the yeah the intelligence is good. Yeah, that works. Okay, and then this was has VAT dot subscribe right. Yeah, good memory. Uh, and. And we do has VAT value equals yeah, that's correct. Yeah. value. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see if it broke anything. Uh, but we will have to change over here as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it hasn't. It hasn't. It's good. Oh, no. Cool. No, it, it worked. It, it's false. Yeah. So now if you go back to the store and you make it the default to True. Yes. There you go. So, so, so you can see how we can have like this global state. So we saw again, like I think it's similar. We saw global CSS, local CSS, and then you know local state, local mm -hmm. state. So it's the same thing again. Like this is a bit of a contrived example because our app is so small that you could just change that value and just give it to the component directly. But you imagine if you have a complex app and you're several levels down you don't right. want to have like you know the don't have props being passed down you know five levels deep so this is how you do it you'd have a store that has a value and then um might be running a little bit short on time but then you can also increment it in another component so um what we can do maybe um as an exercise i'm not sure if we have time but like, <laughs> if you create another you could have another component that changes that value on its own as well, right? So I am I am thinking we have another component that changes the value of the price. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This is interesting. Okay, wow, okay. Uh now again I'm my brain is trying to compare this with React. Please, uh, please. Because again <laughs> <laughs> and I and I'm like, wow, this makes it more easy because mm -hmm. first of all the mental model is now very simple compared to React. And you are also writing less code, mm -hmm. which is again crazy. Yeah. So you're a convert. Welcome to the club. <laughs> 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 mm. There's um, there's also like, uh, not in Svelte, Svelte, but in SvelteKit, it's a lot like Remix in that it relies on like Having a fetch and a get mm -hmm. because you, you know you're telling me you use remix a bit, so that that's also similar, and that it's really trying to like leverage like these common you know these conventions you know like having a fetch and a loader rather right. than like doing your your next like get static props or like doing these like framework specific things. So it's Veldkit, which we'll look at I'm sure another time, uh, which is again the next the the next JS version of you know for for Svelte. Allows you to make mm -hmm. more complex apps has also that. So yeah, um, I'm glad you like it. I like it too. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, I know we talked uh, a little bit about uh, 
the difference between Svelte and Svelkit, and we mm-hmm. are going to do a different live stream for that. But for our viewers, can you, you know, just help them understand what is the major difference and why would someone, you know, if they are building a complex app, should use Svelkit and not Svelte? Right. So it's easy if you've already used React and Next. Uh, that's basically the equivalent. If not, I'm going to explain the whole thing. So you're, so this is a purely front-end app, right? If you disable your JavaScript, mm-hmm. there's nothing happening because you're, you know, you're, uh, everything, all your, your HTML that you see, everything gets created by Svelte. So if you want, so that might be good for like other things, you know, like, you know, for like very complex dynamic apps, but a lot of times for websites, you don't need a lot of that content to rely on JavaScript or to be dynamic at all. Like in our case, you know, we, we, if we had a product thing that, um, that came from a store, you don't need that to be dynamic, you know, unless like you have like sales going on, but mm-hmm. if it's just a, a list of product with prices and there's no shopping cart or there's nothing, you know, dynamic there, you don't need JavaScript there. You don't sure. need your client to do computation. So you could, you, so the idea of next is to do that with React is to, run all the code that we have now and then generate a static site out of it or do a server-side rendered app in which which allows for more you know communication and more dynamism whereas you know static site is just that just dumb html living on its own which you know you could still have some javascript in there it doesn't mean you can do no javascript but mm-hmm. that's the that's the overall philosophy is you're you're doing the the everything you're doing basically the the compilation you know, ahead of time or offloading that to a server so that your client only has to do the minimal amount of work. So yeah, in React, again, they call it hydration, right? It's like right. you're, you're mm-hmm. already preparing your, you're already doing some work on the server and then you hydrate, meaning you add the dynamic stuff. So Svelkit is the same thing, but for Svelte. I have one more question for you because sure. let's just say I am, you know, I am actually now getting this information from an API, right? Yes. Would it make sense to have that API call in the store.js file? Yes. Yeah. So, so again, it depends. So definitely, yeah, because you want to make sure it propagates, but it depends on your app. So it's hard to, you could, you could have one, you could have one um, thing thing that's like for example an, like we have a has vat you can have an is loading right that's also uh-huh. shared right so you like when you know when you're while it's loading you could have like a spinner and make sure everything else is out um so that could be in the store that could be locally in app.fail because it's just one value um but yeah that could be like um you know whether there's a discount for example you could get that from the api you could put that in the store uh, it depends again depends on how complex your app is you don't need to use the store this was more like for this is how you do global mm-hmm. state you don't have to like if it if it was in our case if we just had the api on top probably wouldn't be worth it because just one value that you just get from the api so you can probably set that in app.sfeld but yeah then it's it's up to you really you can you know you can do whatever you want but that's a good thing to know that having that you can have global state too okay yeah yeah, yeah. exactly well, uh, we are almost on time, so I want to do a quick recap, and yes. then maybe we can share a few more resources where people can learn more about Svelte. Sure. All right. Uh, so we started with understanding what is Svelte and how it is different from other UI frameworks. And mm-hmm. one thing that really amazed me was how quickly the project setup was done. It was like, oh yeah, you were even like, a fraction of a second. Was I was like, like wait, what? I know, NPM install 30 <laughs> seconds. What's that? Not even that, like maybe 10. I don't know. Yeah, I quick. Know. I was like, that That was something that just blew my mind. And then we, we looked at the default type that comes with the initial uh, setup script. And we started playing around. We start, we created a card component. And in that yeah, card component. If you want to show it like the, yeah, like in, yeah. In the card Minimal. component, we initially uh, yeah. added data. We hard coded the data and we were rendering that out. We also looked into uh, scoped CSS. Yeah. We also looked into yeah, scoped yeah. CSS. And yeah. then I also liked uh, open props. 
So with open props, we, we are basically using open props to style our application right now. And what we did was we made open props available or we made this CSS available to all the other components of our application. Mm -hmm. And we did that by using the keyword global. Yeah. So all the styles your, yeah. applied over yeah. here is going to apply to the whole application. Yeah. And then you could, you could see that, for example, in our card, we had this variable, uh, the CSS var, again, that was defined. So the font weight, mm -hmm. you know, eight and four, these were defined in open prop. So in app but, you know, we could have defined these apps, you know, ourselves, but you know, this again, for demonstration, you could have you know, just import anything you want there. You could import Tailwind or whatever, even though with Tailwind probably you want to use the preprocessor. Yeah, it's so yeah. big. But yeah, anyway, you could use anything. If you have a design system that has, you know, it's design tokens like we do in Contentful, we have our, our design tokens are you know, on the, on the CSS file that we can just import. So. Awesome. And then we also looked into uh, local states. So we defined a local, uh, we defined a local state, added the value in there. We saw how it works. And then we also looked at the store, at the global store, where it mm. created a, a global value or a global store value, a global prop mm. maybe. And then we used it in the card component and then we tested it out and we saw how that works. And again, yeah. oh, one, one more thing, which I really liked was this piece of code. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have the data, uh, which is basically an array of different products. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's well, you don't have to use JavaScript methods. You can use like a template thing. Those? Yeah. It's like more like a template. Yeah. Yeah. You can use the template things in Svelte, <laughs> uh, to, to do some JavaScript stuff. Uh, so basically this is looping over the data array and then we are rendering out each item. Yeah. Which is interesting. All right. So we, the can folks... create, we can create components dynamically basically based on our data. Exactly. Wonderful. So for the folks who want to learn more about Svelte, according to you, which is, you know, the go-to place. Uh, like like uh, the same place we were, so Svelte.dev, their documentation is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you see, yeah, you had everything here. So, uh, yeah. And then click on the docs or just everything. Just feel free to have a look around. Like there's a tutorial, there are docs. This is where we get our each block from. So you have the template syntax. Right. So, yeah, so you have an each, you could have conditionals with, you know, with, with if, or you could have you know, promises or whatever. Um, but yeah, so go in there. It's the docs are also really well done. Um, there's a there's like an interactive tutorial you can mm -hmm. follow, which is basically basically what we did in the with like no less um, with a more specific thing you know with like a counter and like setting state, and it didn't use like open props, but it's basically the same thing. It goes step by step of like here's how you make you start with a component with just HTML, then you add styles, then you add JavaScript, step by step. Yeah. 